In 2022, I did a review of the Meyer Optic Gerlitz Trio Plan 100mm f2.8 version 2, and I was super excited to do the unboxing because the packaging was absolutely beautiful, but unfortunately, I was very dissatisfied with the lens. Somehow, my hate video made it all the way back to Germany to Meyer Optic Gerlitz, and they reached out challenging me to do a second review. Check out the email. Dear Zach, hope you are well. I recently came across your YouTube video with the title Nikon Z Meyer Optic Gerlitz Trail Plan 100 f2.8 II. And to be honest, I was kind of shocked when I watched your review and really can't understand what happened there. There are a few things I want to comment on. First of all, there is not a single photo we have faked. All photos that we show on our website or post on our social media channels are straight out of camera. They of course have gone through standard raw processing, white balancing, etc. But that's it. In case you have a specific image that you question or want to discuss, please let me know which one. It would have been nice to be contacted from your side before spreading such a statement, but okay. Ooh, a little spicy, are we? I understand your point regarding electronic communication. This is, of course, a plus in comfort, but the demand for that has been very low. At the same time, as soon as electronic parts will be added to the product, everything is getting way more complicated with German authorities, environmental requirements, export requirements, etc. So costs for these chips are not the reason that we did not add them so far. It is more of a lack of demand at the same time, the additional work regarding authorities, reportings, etc. But nevertheless, we will do something there maybe next year, depending on our development capacities. We compare our modern versions to the vintage originals, and in terms of Trio Plan 100, as for the others as well, we definitely kept its imaging style slash look and pushed its performance at the same time. More sharpness, more contrast, etc. So either you got a bad slash damaged product or the trio plan type lenses just do not fit your taste. We do have many, many customers who got a trio plan 102 product is on the market since mid 2020 already and are completely satisfied with their lens. So in case the trio plan type lenses do generally fit your taste, the lens must have been damaged during shipping from Germany to the US or at Adorama's warehouse or during shipment from Adorama to you. Besides calibration using an auto kilometer, if I said that correct, every single lens is mounted on a camera and sample shots at different distances and apertures are taken during QA at our manufacturing in Hamburg to ensure that everything is fine. So something must have happened during transport. I would like to set the record straight. To do that, I would like to offer that we send over a Trio Plan 102 for Nikon Z directly from us to you as a free sample to be reviewed. Please let me know in case you are interested in giving us slash the lens a second chance and to hopefully convince you of the opposite. Regardless of your answer, I wish you a great weekend and stay safe. Thanks, Jonas. And I responded with greetings from across the Atlantic. Thank you for watching and reaching out. I admire the pride and confidence you have in your product and I'm honored you would go out of your way to challenge my findings. I am definitely a lover of beautiful lens designs, simple or complex, and a lover of unique lenses, special effects lenses, and lens character, so I do hope that a fresh copy of this lens for a second review will prove that my first product was simply damaged in shipping. Small channels like mine go unnoticed by the huge brands that I love, i.e. Nikon, Tamron, Godox, Canon, etc. So with the great respect I now have for your company by following up with such a small content creator like myself, I will accept your offer to do a follow-up review and I hope the end of this adventure will result in a long-term friendship between Z-Wade Photo, Meyer Optic Gerlitz, and her partner companies as I have always been a fan of fine German manufactured products. And a final word I'll mention, while my small but very passionate community demands my honest, no holding back, straightforward opinion on my experiences with products and services, I do very much look forward to Meyer Optic Gerlitz changing my mind and making me eat my own words. And Meyer Optic Gerlitz responded with, Hey Zach, many thanks for your honest and speedy response. We are also a very small company, especially compared to those market companions that you mentioned. But we put our hearts into what we do, building lenses by hand, using the best materials, etc. We are also very much trying to stay in contact as much as we can with the photography community, as the photographers out there are the basis of our work. And we are especially looking for honest, no holding back, straightforward opinions like yours. We are not looking for storytellers holding back their real opinions. Winky face. I like this because now I kind of feel like we've built up a friendly rapport back and forth. It kind of just feels like I'm messaging a friend to know. So they ask for my address and everything for shipping and they continue with, you could also provide us with your photos you will have shot with the Trio Plan. 
First, we could give you feedback in case you have anything to discuss slash complain. And if you like, we could post them online linked to your YouTube channel to promote you. That is something we often do as we are looking for content and the photographer gets visibility in return. And maybe we can do further reviews or whatever else together. Having our new Biotar 58 released already and the Biotar 75mm coming up soon, or our Primo Plan 58-75mm lenses, there's definitely more to discover. Have a great weekend. Best regards, Jonas. And so I have accepted the challenge by Meyer Optic Gerlitz to do a second review of the Trio Plan 100 f2.8 version 2. It is my promise that even in the face of a potential long-term friendship with Meyer Optic Gerlitz, where I would maybe get to try all kinds of cool stuff, I will only maintain absolute honesty as my subscribers and Meyer Optic Gerlitz now expect. What's up everybody, I'm Z Wade, the Z Wade and Z Wade Photo. And as you probably guessed by the intro, I did get called out by Meyer Optic Gerlitz. Somehow my video made it back to them and they sent me this absolutely free. So something I wanna mention first is their main stance is that surely the Trio Plan 100 was damaged in shipping because there's no way it could have got through their QA. And they claim either their lenses just aren't my style or it was damaged in shipping. So I love an artistic lens. What I find interesting is the lens that they sent me is a demo lens, which I'm totally fine with. But who knows how many people have used it. I'm sure my Optic Gerlitz checks things before they, uh, they throw it back into circulation. But what is kind of amazing is that I'm pretty sure that this is not in the Meyer Optic Gerlitz Trio Plan 100 box, which was amazingly well packaged, very good looking package. This, I have a feeling, is just simply in the box wrapped in some packaging because, I mean, I know for a fact that the box was heavier than this. And the point that I'm getting at is that seems really risky and ballsy considering their main stance being surely it was damaged in shipping. So I've got a razor blade here and we're gonna dig into this. I almost forgot to mention also that my reputation with you guys is way, way more important than any potential partnership where I would be testing out other lenses. I greatly appreciate Meyer Optic Gerlitz um, kind of maybe hinting at testing out other lenses in the future. But if, if this doesn't work out, if my opinions don't change and I'm looking forward to my opinion changing, then, you know, I'm not going to sacrifice my honesty to you guys for the sake of testing out cool stuff for free. And Meyer Optic Gerlitz, as we saw from the email, does understand that and they expect me to be totally honest. As I suspected, it is just wrapped rather loosely in uh, standard bubble wrap. And again, I just want to say that considering their stance is surely it was damaged in shipping whenever it was in its fitted awesome box, uh, brand new, uh, I just, I have doubts. And so this here, it just seems really, really risky. Ah, uh, we have the familiar feel of just being really well made. Uh, I'll never back down from that. These lenses feel really good. They're, <laughs> they're like metal all over the place except in the caps. I'm going to put all the packaging back into the original box. There was no discussion whether they're just going to let me have this or whether I have to send it back. I imagine I have to send it back. And so I'm keeping all of the packaging. If you want to see my initial impressions of this lens, I invite you to go watch the, the other video. I will put it in the description below. Now, what will disappear, should I change my mind on this, is the hate video I made. So it is my position that I will take that down if they can make me eat my words. If there was truly something wrong with that lens, I will eat my words. I will say, wow, okay, it obviously was damaged and that one will disappear. Just giving it a quick inspection to make sure there are no flaws before I get into this. It seems to be in incredibly good condition. There is no internal dust. There is no hazing, no nothing, okay? This appears to be 
a brand new with the exception of a little bit of dust in the grooves of the focus ring. But that is external, that's not internal. That's just right there, cosmetic, just some stuff. I could probably get it out real quick. And now it looks totally brand new. So in order to do this fair by Meyer Optic Gerlitz, I'm actually going to use the Z9 this time. Last time I did the Z6 too. The reason I'm using the Z9 is because, you know, older lenses don't really render at a very high megapixel, so they say. And so one could kind of assume that anything older than like a D-series Nikon, it's not gonna render to the full potential that say like a 36 plus megapixel camera will give you. And so this being a modern rendition, it should be able to look totally fine on the Z9. And honestly, if you can't make the Z9's images look good, I consider that a little bit like throwing a bone to Meyer Optic Gerlitz. You're going to get my best rendering camera in this particular experiment. First things first, we're gonna do a little bit of studio stuff, uh, which I didn't really do last time. Uh, nice and controlled light. Uh, I'm gonna kill the lights. I'm gonna set up my snack wherever that is. I have a snack here somewhere and I'm gonna take a couple pictures of it before we step outside and I can again show you that the bokeh on this is absolutely stunning. Okay, and that hasn't changed since last time. That's one of the positive things I had. The bokeh is exactly as advertised. I mostly had a problem with sharpness and so we're gonna kick it up a notch. Okay, so I've got my snack here, a humble banana. This is actually a better subject than you might think because there's some small writing on there. That'll be good. And then, um, you know, the color, the yellow, we'll be able to get some yellow and some green and some red. And we'll be able to check the accuracy of the colors. And then also some texture work after I peel this open, uh, we'll, we'll check the, uh, <laughs> the texture of the inside of the banana peel. Let's go ahead and grab our Z9. There's a little bit of slop in the mount here. As I said, this is a demo lens, and so who knows how many times this thing has been cycled. Uh, there's really no way of knowing, so it's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's not like we'll get light leaks or anything, I don't think. So let's go ahead and kill the lights so I can get total control of my lighting. I'm gonna use this little thing here to hold this up. A little duct tape, perhaps. There we go, that should work just fine. The focus distance on this lens is, is pretty huge. And so we're gonna have to stand back. I wanna make sure I get an appropriate shutter speed to have no camera shake. I get my focus peaking turned on. We're gonna go for high sensitivity. We're at F2.8. Now let's try it about F4. I actually wanna get my light a lot closer because I wanna be able to use Full stopped down. Okay, that's about F4. Let's try 5.6. And I think that should be okay. I'm getting a little higher of an ISO than I actually want. And so we don't want it to be dirty. We want it to be fair. And so now, don't worry my optic gullets. I'll wash my hands before touching the lens again. I've just got to eat this banana down just a little to get some of that texture. All right, that should be okay. Okay, hands are all washed and dry. What I really need is to shoot this at like 100 ISO just to be 100% sure that it does indeed have sharpness at 5.6. And I think the only way I can do that totally fair is to actually introduce some flash. And so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try something else because it doesn't seem like it's that damned sharp. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the Z6 II, which is recording me off of the tripod, put the Z9 on the tripod, and if they're not, if they're, they're not clean and, and not blurry at that point, then we have kind of our answer without me going outside. So let's see. Okay, so I did some shots all the way up to F11 and from different distances all the way about 
and a half way over there at f5.6. I have to get them into uh, Lightroom to see what they're going to look like. But first, we're going to head back to the house, and I know there's some spots where I can get some good bokeh. I already know this is going to be good, so we'll see you soon. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom, and guys, I have a lot of images, okay? I took a picture of everything that I possibly could uh, while not on camera to give as fair of a retry of this lens as I possibly can. And surprise, unrelated to this lens, I was doing a photo shoot at the end of the day of the making of this video, and so I actually ended up doing some portraits as well. So right off the bat, I we don't know what the apertures are, but I do know that this one is at f2.8. And so as you can see at f2.8, it is hazy. It's cloudy. Uh, that's just what this lens does at f2.8. And then we stepped up to f4 and that haziness is gone. And now we actually have good color rendition and we actually have nice contrast. And so right off the bat, I want to strike that there obviously was something wrong with the last copy that I had because it was low contrast. Okay, almost no contrast. And this is actually sharper than my last one. So even on this, this second photo, we do know that there was obviously something wrong with my other lens. Now that's a good thing. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. This is probably five, six and it's sharp. Okay. So I'm already eating my own words. Uh, that's what I wanted to happen. Okay. I wanted something to be wrong with the last lens. I don't like that I have to take down that video because it has more views than most of my videos, but this is good because now I can reevaluate what I think about this lens as far as its sharpness throughout the range and its contrast and, and all that. So this is basically all fresh. Let's look at some texture here. Okay, so so far what I'm seeing is that this lens is not wicked sharp, okay? But it's sharp. The last one I had was not. Cool. Well, we don't need to just look at a bunch of bananas. I will say that there is something off with the metering because you can see that most of these are kind of too dark. And so I don't know why that's happening. And also I noticed about around here that with the focus peaking, using the focus peaking, it does seem to be a little shifted. And so like the focus peaking is not real accurate. I don't know if that has something to do with the... Uh, the fact that there's like no communication happening. What I really wish I had was the confirmation when you're manual focusing. So, you know, whenever you're manual focusing and you have your little box and it's red, well, it confirms by turning green. That's really, I really missed that today. And so with electronic contacts, I imagine we would get that. Uh, Meyer Optic Girlitz does know, we saw in the email, uh, there's, issues and expenses that come with that, not for manufacturing. Um, it's not that much of a cost increase, but it becomes a, a problem with uh, port authorities and things like that. But I will say this actually has a ton of contrast in the studio. And so uh, that's that's really good to see. But we don't need to look at like a ton of bananas. Let's, let's look on to something else. These, by the way, uh, around here, these are at a much higher aperture. That's why we have more of this um, sharp little camera shake on that, I think. Yeah, we have more. Basically, the entire banana is sharp because we're at like, you know, F8 or something like that. But let's go to some stuff that I did outside and see how this did. Missed focus on this one. Missed focus on that one. Shooting backlit. This could be a cool black and white, maybe. No. Wow, okay, so that's it's quite detailed, actually. Quite detailed. That's the plane of focus right there. Okay. This lens is really hard to focus with, guys. Um, the, the focus throw on it is huge. 
I think this is at f2.8. Uh, we could see that it's just hazy. I could I could tell looking through my camera lens that um, it, it was cloudy and hazy at f2.8. Guys, that's just the way this lens is. And unfortunately, that is where the craziest bokeh is. But this is nice and robust looking, nice contrast. Got good sharpness through here. This is doing um, some stuff off in the distance. We can see that it's just kind of, it's kind of flat. This is uh, likely at f2.8 as well. And then if we look here, this looks pretty good. And then I did one at f2.8 and it's just really cloudy. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's it's just not very sharp at f2.8 and this is a, this is a pretty decent distance, right? It's just, you get that kind of hazy, um, that, that haziness that might be great for somebody with like an artistic character. I can call it that now because this lens isn't broken like my last one, but this actually looks, this actually looks pretty cool. Like it's really rich in here. It's kind of like some shallow depth of field stuff that I was trying to do, which is hard with this lens because <laughs> the focus distance is like huge. Kind of boring. Let's check out some color rendition. This is at f2.8 and we can see again, it's hazy. That's just the nature of this lens at f2.8. But whenever we stop down, even to I think this was at either f4 or 5.6, it's way better. And now I can strike off the complaint of this lens ha uh, having poor saturation. It does not have bad saturation. The, uh, the last one was obviously broke because this is a very um, thick and robust red and it captured that well. That's good. So I had a good, this is probably five, six or something like that. This is really, really detailed in here. And this is, uh, I, I took this because I noticed that if you properly expose that now the metering i feel like is it's still a little bit off if you expose appropriately this is what it looks like but if you under expose this lens a little bit i feel like it's a lot better yeah i think this lens is just a little bit better if you under expose it a little bit and this uh is at f 2.8 again and we can see see it's just it's just hazy we don't need to keep talking about that is f 2.8 we can see that i wonder if we can fix that with like some like a heavy amount of contrast. There's just really not much you can do with it. I do, however, real quick, I want to try something in black and white. I feel like we need to do that. Looks pretty good in black and white, as should be expected with a very low element count lens. Looks pretty good in black and white, I'd say. This, uh appears to be at f 2.8 backing up a little bit and this looks pretty artistic so i guess if you have the right subject uh you could take advantage of that that haziness that you get uh at f 2.8 this isn't a great subject for black and white either now since this lens isn't ugly unsharp it's just kind of uh hazy at f 2.8 I think if I dug into my imagination, I could probably find this actually looks really good in here. Uh, I imagine I could find an artistic use for this haziness, but I would probably normally shoot this lens no lower than F4 for most projects. Here we have that bubbly licious F2.8 that this lens is known for. Okay, that beautiful soap bubble bokeh. This is just really soft, but this doesn't offend me. Um, I actually rather kind of like this. It looks a little dreamy. So that's good when your lens isn't broken. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, I actually really like that. <laughs> hey, Meyer Optic or Litz, can I keep this? Like, <laughs> we'll talk about price later, but um, cool. Okay, I'm, I'm actually smiling now. Uh, this is stopped down to F4 and we still have some soap bubble boga. But once we get to about F5.6, this just kind of looks like bokeh that you would get out of anything else. And so if you're looking for sharpness, you're not going to get that delicious bokeh, really. This still has a bit of haziness to it. That's okay, though. We're at about 200 ISO, so I'm probably as bright as it was outside. It's probably 5.6.6.3 range, something like that. 
Here we go, stopping back down to get some more of that bubbly licious bokeh. Now let's get into some shots of Lolly, because um, that's where this lens kind of failed. I did a lot of these at f2.8, trying to get the beautiful bokeh, but we can see it's just, it, like, it's sharp in a sense, but it's cloudy, okay? And like I said, that's just what this lens does at f2.8. <laughs> God, that's so cute. Let's try this in black and white. Yeah, for me, uh, f2.8 for something like like this, like portraits, is it, it just would never work. It works much better for subjects like this. You know what I mean? This, I love. This is what comes out of Lolly's backside. So now that I have a lens that isn't broken, it would really be a game of finding out where this lens works, right? Where that cloudiness at f2.8, that haziness, that or dreaminess, if you want to call it that, where that would be appropriate. It's a shame because I, I did get some really, for me and my style, this kind of thing where it's like a pet, uh, I want sharpness of the subject. So, and see at, at this distance at f2.8, we don't really get that beautiful bubbly licious bokeh. So you've got to get like right up on the uh, focus distance, I believe, to really get that crazy bokeh that people love so much, including myself. See, this is stopped down. Uh, no, it's not. This isn't it. I did end up stopping down somewhere. Look at that bokeh, though. Isn't that insane? It's just like, you're never you're never going to get this sharp. This, I got her nose. <clears throat> I got her nose as sharp as it can be. And see, it's detailed. This is how I know that this isn't an unsharp lens. It's just got this cloudy, hazy um, nature to it um, at f2.8 because it is detailed. Even these like little droplets from her nose. So we, we know that it's in focus in here and that it is sharp. It's just kind of um, that haziness makes it seem like that. Crazy bokeh, though. Let's see if I can find where I stopped. Here's where I stopped down. And we do still have a little bit of this of this bokeh because we're about as close as I can possibly get. And it's acceptably sharp. There's another one stopped down. Let's do a little work to this one. And it does it does have good contrast in this particular uh, version, this is really sharp. I wonder if this was like in the 6.3 range. So it, it's, it's good to see that this lens does have, uh, is pretty contrasty. Man, Meyer Optic Gerlitz, I wish mine wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been broken because I would have been able to create some pretty cool stuff with just this and that. I wouldn't have shot pictures of Lolly, but I would have done some more cool stuff like that, uh, Lantern bird feeder back there. I would have been able to do a ton of that by now. Now this is this is really sharp. I don't know what aperture this was. Probably six three seven one ish, maybe f eight. No, probably five five or six three at a hundred ISO four hundredth of a second. Probably somewhere in that range. I would love to have that communication. By the way, that looks good though. We were taking some nothing shots. I don't know what aperture this is at. Maybe around f four three five ish. This is probably 2.8 because this bokeh is insane. Yeah, and, and we can see that haziness. So this one is probably in the F4 range. Being a little sharper. And then this one is definitely F2.8. Er, yeah, you can see right, if we look right here, see how much crazier that bokeh is. Insane bokeh, this must be F2.8. And again, see, it's just a little, it's in focus. Just hazy. If you can get used to that, this might be a great lens for you. Actually. Give that a little one, two. Oh, that looks really cool. If you add a bunch of dehaze. Whoa. That might be printable. <laughs> that just looks crazy. It looks like a painting, like an abstract painting. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. <laughs> Let's see what a little radial gradient would look like. Invert that. Pull that up. Focus it. Let's try a select subject to brighten this up a little bit. See what it finds. Cool. It found everything I wanted it to find. 
<laughs> cool. I like this, man. This is like abstract, an abstract painting or something. Sweet. I'll go back and save that one. Okay, so this is F2.8 again. You see? We expect that. And then I, I just kind of, um, that's also F2.8. And I stopped this down. I want to say I went to 5.6 and then this one I think was like 8 or something. We got the sun coming over here. So if if you've got the sun and it's like not directly behind you, it's going to have this look every single time. This lens is a very like simple design. There's nothing to protect it. This unfortunately was as close as like a, a duck feather or something or maybe a goose feather. We've, they're migrating right now. Um, I just couldn't get close enough to it for a macro shot, but that would have been a cool macro shot. Is it F2.8? Has to be. Boring. Here's some more F2.8s of Lolly. That one I missed focus. Trying to get her eyes, but this looks focused. But what's weird is with the focus peaking, like all of this, all of this was illuminated. Her eyeball was illuminated. And so that's why I think it might be like a little shifted or something. Or maybe the Nikon's focus peaking is just terrible. A lot of people hate it. Okay, so now we're going to get into the portraits. I found it to be only fair that we do this. These are not, um, these are kind of quick shots, okay? Uh, as I was dialing in my my flash, when we get to the end, we'll, we'll see more um, contrast and whatnot. So this is like, reminds me of like 80s glamour, right? But it is, this F2.8 is very soft. Let's give this a little. I just want to see how recoverable it is. Yeah, it's it's soft. It's detailed, but it's soft. We get like every single line in the neck and, and everything, but it's just soft. So let's get to where I start stopping down, maybe. This actually was a, this really soft look was really popular in like the 80s and early 90s for Studio Glamour. Okay, so now we're stopped down and this is a lot more contrasty. The skin tones actually look pretty good. But again, all of this was showing up in focus, like right on her eyeball, was lighting up in the focus peaking. But, you know, it's just not there. It's just not super dang sharp yet. Let's see. We'll see if I nail this anywhere. This is the best one. Okay. So it's it's tough to get it there. It's a it's a tough focusing lens, but when you get it, it looks pretty good. And I have no idea what aperture this is at. I, I wish I did. But again, there's like no reason for there's no reason for her face not to be sharp because the focus peaking was indicating that it was illuminated. Darn. There we go, just a little. Where's that one that was actually like kind of sharp? Was it this one? Yeah. Let's do a little select subject. Invert. Let's darken the background a little. Need a little bit of attention about right cha. Nice. Just a little bit. She has dark eyes. All right, so now we've run through the images. What is the final verdict? Initially, I complained about sharpness. I said it was ugly unsharp. It's actually sharp. It's not wickedly sharp, but there is a, a decent amount of sharpness um, at 5.6 and beyond. F2.8 does have that cloudiness, and that brings me to the next one. I argued that there was no contrast. There's actually quite a bit of contrast. Once you hit 
F4 and higher. F2.8, it seems a little low in contrast because of that haziness, but there is detail in there. It's just not particularly sharp looking. Uh, that is just a character of this lens, apparently. In the original copy, it was kind of like that across the board. The next argument was the saturation argument. I thought the original lens uh, was poorly saturated, as we can see by the label of the banana and the fire hydrant and the blue from the trampoline. Uh, it actually has decent saturation. And the last argument that I had was the price argument. And I actually want to retain my position on that. I think $1,000 for this lens is really high. I think that even at f2.8 with that haziness, we saw an example of where that was really cool, even though it was kind of soft and hazy and a little um, lacking in contrast at f2.8. And so if that's your thing, like I, I could definitely find a use for that. But being as this lens is an absolute mother effer to focus, the focus throw is huge. This lens will kick your butt, okay? If you're not experienced with manual focus lenses. Uh, since the focus peaking didn't seem totally on, I think at $1,000, it still does need to have um, some kind of communication between the lens and the camera. And I know Meyer Optic Gerlitz said that, you know, there's headaches and there's price problems associated with that with German authorities. And it's not a manufacturing thing. It's a after manufacturing thing. Um, I, I really think those need to be on there. Um, I think you should come out with a third version in the future. And it needs to have that just because that lens is so likely to kick somebody's butt. It even gave me a hard time. And I consider myself to be a very good manual focuser because I went through a period of years where I was collecting old um, manual focus lenses, you know, Zeiss's and yeah, huge fan of the Voigtlander 58, all these manual focus lenses, the AIS lenses. I love those. This lens gave me a run for my money. It's, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, lens to manual focus. The, the action is smooth, great engineering, but it is tough. It's huge. And if we had that communication, then we would get that confirmation whenever we're manual focusing that I was missing so much, <laughs> a little green illumination whenever it was was in focus would really help. Maybe that's not a CPU contact thing. Maybe my camera just wasn't doing it. I don't know. But a little bit of communication with a lens with this much of a learning curve because it is a tough lens, a cool lens. I will say that I think this lens is cool now and I would like to have one, but not at $1,000. I, I don't want to pay that much for it. Um, but with this lens having such a big learning curve to it, that aperture data that would come through with the CPU contacts would be hugely helpful because it would be very, very beneficial to be able to go back and just see in Lightroom without having to take notes in the field or, you know, with this image, I used this aperture. It would be nice to be able to see that. That way, you know, okay, I still have bubbly licious bokeh at, at, at this distance, it's easier to remember I was about this far away than what your actual aperture was, you know? So any little bit of information that would come through in Lightroom would, would kind of reduce that learning curve and it would get you caught up a little faster with a lot less trouble. I'm not going to take a pen and paper out into the field and take pictures of where the aperture was <laughs> at what point. Um, this lens is, I feel overpriced at a thousand dollars. That's just where I'm going to leave it, but everything else. Yeah. I'm eating my words on it. I had a bad lens, my optical lens. you were correct. I had a dud damaged in shipping or something. There was something wrong with it because this lens was a totally new lens. And with that, the old one, the Meyer Optic Gerlitz fail video that you emailed me about, it's going bye-bye. I'm a man of my word. That is not a true statement of how this lens is supposed to be. And so you heard it here. I got a Meyer Optic Gerlitz. Trail Plan 100 version two that was damaged in shipping. In the true nature of what that lens should be, I finally got to experience it with this little experiment. Guys, thank you if you made it this far. I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade and Z-Wade Photo. Meyer Optic Gerlitz, you win on this one, guys.